Megan, I want to try to understand what I can about God. And I'm told that the questions of modality in philosophy, the questions of necessity or contingency, are very important to really dig deep into theology. So help me understand the nature of modality and how it applies to theology. Good. Well, so we use modality in every branch of philosophy, not just in philosophy of religion. Basically, it comes up anytime we're wondering whether something has to hold as a necessary truth. So you might think two plus two equals four. That, that just couldn't fail to be true. Or every human person is rational, a bit more optimistically, couldn't fail to be true. Or whether or not something's just merely possible or contingent. So it's merely possible that we're here at St. Mary's today, or it's actually possible, <laughs> but uh, you know, we could have had this uh, discussion over at Notre Dame, or we yeah. could have had this discussion in Beijing if we yeah. wanted to. So location properties are the kinds of things that seem to be highly contingent. Other things seem to be necessary, and then you have this question of, like, why is that? Why are there two, these two different categories of truths or properties? And this is a puzzle that you know, goes back probably to Aristotle, of like the, these seem like such natural distinctions to make, but what exactly would be the difference maker for these kinds of truths? We get into theology when we realize that uh, many theist philosophers in the tradition have thought whatever the difference is between possibility and necessity, it's somehow grounded in God. So philosophers, like going back to Leibniz, really like this possible worlds talk. They'll say something is true if it's true in every possible world. Something is just possible if it's true in some possible worlds, but not true in others. And then you have this question, like possible worlds, isn't there just this world? And there are different answers. Some philosophers might think, actually, God made every world. Like every possibility is something God would have created because maybe there are really good things that could only be realized in some possibilities, but not others. plenitude, as they say. Yeah. I got to say, I'm not convinced by that. That seems like asking a lot of God. And for all of the uh, very good possible worlds God might have created, ones that seem significantly better than this world, there also seem to be a lot of really horrible worlds that God would have been compelled to create just because they're possible. If he's, if like him creating the worlds is what makes them possible and his decision about which worlds to create is the, is the foundation for possibility. And the vast number of sterile worlds, if you have to have every combination, most of them would be sterile, neither good nor bad, just yeah. nothing. Exactly. And that just doesn't seem to map on in our view of like God as a creative agent. It seems like, you know, if you take the, um, at least the Judeo-Christian view of God seriously, when he's creating, he wanted to create something that was really good. Yeah. So all of those sterile or defective worlds don't seem to be like the kinds of things that God would cause to come into being. Um, so then you're not, you know, then you want to back away from this view that whatever modality is, is somehow backed up by worlds that God would have created. You shouldn't, we shouldn't take this possible worlds talk super literally. Then we have this question, okay, well, can the nature of modality be brought back to God in some other way? Maybe, maybe possibility and necessity are distinguished by like God's intentions. So God has decided any of the necessary truths, no matter what would have ever happened, he was going to make it the case that two plus two equals four. He just had resolved to do it. Yeah, but the alternative is that, is that God had no choice. Yeah. That, that the, uh, the abstract object, the platonic object, as they say, of two plus two equals four or mathematics is something that is, is true if, there were, if God exists or, or, or is true whether God does not exist. And so that's a, that's a whole separate problem. Are, yeah. are those issues, in a sense, above God? Are those constituents that God had to deal with uh, in, in the process if you have necessary truths that are necessary even without God? Yeah, I mean, this really bothers some philosophers, this idea of, like, if God is the ultimate creator, he should be able to create mathematics yeah. as well. Like, we just want right. to give him as many powers and decisions right. as possible. Other philosophers actually find it a huge relief to discover that there were some things God couldn't create <laughs> because we get to problems like the problem of evil. Hmm. So uh, if God could have created a world full of absolutely free creatures who only ever had flourishing lives and no suffering, Presumably, if God was morally good, he would have created that world. But you know, we look around and we realize he didn't create that world. Yeah, that we know for sure. That we know for sure. So some explanations of this are, well, you can't have both freedom and a guarantee of moral perfection on the part of the free creatures that you create. So that, God just couldn't do that. That's like making a square circle or making 2 plus 2 equal 5. Right. 
And, and so by two plus two equals four as a necessity independent of God says that there are things that are independent of God and therefore as, as, yeah. as a derivative of that you can, you can try to ameliorate the problem of evil. Yeah, well, just think about it this way. Like, there are rules even God had to follow in creation, yeah. and one of those hard right. and fast rules was if you want free creatures, then you can't guarantee that they're not going to commit moral evils right. and they're not right. going to undergo this kind of suffering, right. preventable suffering. Right. And, and, and to some, though, that, that uh, uh, um, uh, attenuates the power of God, and therefore God is not all-powerful. Yeah. Well, well that, second, <laughs> that second part is kind of a, a logical leap. I mean, this is what... Uh, certainly philosophers who are working in like the perfect being traditions trying right. to understand God's right. properties one of the things we're always doing is trying to understand them as a package yeah. so every time you get one of these puzzles like the problem of evil or the problem of like what God was able to create or the problem of understanding the difference between necessity and possibility they all run up against each other and you're always I think kind of like tweaking the dials, yeah, tweaking, yeah tweaking the dials trying to re-understand the properties in a way to make a being like God possible mm -hmm. it's like that he could have all these properties but realize Realizing that, you know, maybe our initial reaction with some of God's properties, which is to take our, our ordinary understanding of the property, like blow, what it is yeah. to be creative, yeah. yeah, or what it is to be good, and just make it maximal, yeah. turns out to be a bad methodology because yeah. then we run into these puzzles. Right. But underlying all of this is, is modality, is, yeah. is what, what does it mean to be necessary, what does it mean to be possible or contingent, and, and, uh, and, the, and the subdivision of that, of the possibility, what is actualized and yeah. what is not actualized. Yeah, and I'm, uh, as a metaphysician, one hypothesis that I'm really interested in is this idea that the reason why we want to distinguish some truths in terms of necessary and possible, the, the function that those words provide is necessary signals that whatever thing we're talking about, whatever property or claim we're making, is essential to the kind of explanation that we're giving. Mm -hmm. So if we're giving an explanation about God or something God has done and we want to say that he has some property necessarily, what we're saying is like to explain God in this context, this it. property has to be talked about. Right. Um, possibility you know, also indicates a certain kind of dispensability to explanation. And it's really important for us to have those concepts because it's really important when we're trying to give explanations to each other, to signal to each other, pay really close attention to this, mm -hmm. or this is something that's mm -hmm. going to be required mm -hmm. in order to make sense of the claims that I'm giving you. So I take what's called in philosophy a pretty deflationist view of modality. Like compare, compare me on the one side to somebody who thinks there are all of these possible worlds and they're real entities and we need them in order to make sense of these distinctions. My view is that we need modality. Like we need modal concepts in order to give good explanations, in order to understand the world, but we don't need these worlds to be real concrete mm -hmm. entities populated by people or mm -hmm. things that God created. We just need enough for the concepts to work. Mm 